So picture this, you just got out of jail and you've got the appropriate threads and attire to match and you've got a hundred dollars in your wallet or in the case of the i3-8100 you might have 115 in your wallet and you're thinking which four core should I buy? So today we're going to be testing the Ryzen 2200G versus the Ryzen 3 1200 and then compare that against the i3-8100. All its stock settings out of the box with their included stock coolers because if you're probably getting into the market on a budget you probably want to know which is the best four core that you can put in a system and then not have to worry about changing any settings and getting some good performance in games. Also on top of that, I'm gonna be testing it with a GTX 1060, which pairs up really nicely in terms of price performance with these four core CPUs. So let's take a look. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. And the first benchmark I'm going to pull up for you guys is the Firestrike benchmark. This one's probably the most important. It does paint the general picture of the results that you're going to see here today. But you can see with that Firestrike physics score, i3-8100 did come on top, scoring close to 8,000 points, followed by the 2200G scoring over 7,000 points. And then the Ryzen 3 1200 just came shy of that score. The graphics card scores uh, we're all pretty similar across the board and same with the combined scores but moving over to far cry 5 first game we're pulling up here i3-8100 did score the victory with 68 average fps for some reason the ryzen 3 1200 in this game did edge out the 2200g by one fps and this was a little bit weird since the four cores on the ryzen 3 1200 is clocked lower especially out of the box as opposed to the 2200g but the uh, 2200G does have less available uh, cache on board the CPU, which is utilized for gaming. And in this case, I believe this might be the game where it just falls a little bit shy because of that. But moving over to Project Cars 2, 1080p high settings. And we can see here across the board that these three CPUs really scored similar, not just in average FPS, but also 1% and 0.1% lows. And there is a little bit of variance in this benchmark to begin with because it doesn't have an inbuilt benchmark. And of course the cars will behave differently since they drive in different ways every time you run the benchmark. And move over to The Witcher 3, 1080p high settings. Across the board we scored 60 FPS, except with the Ryzen 3 2200G, this did score 59 FPS. And coming in also with a lower 1% low, 0.1% uh, lows, however, were pretty much even across the board. And I did run a few benchmarks on pretty much the same scene. So this was as close to apples to apples as you're going to get with these benchmarks. So it was weird that the Ryzen 2200G was falling a little bit behind, especially in this title and even Far Cry 5, even though it was just a little bit, uh, it was still a, a difference because I do test multiple times. Uh, but moving over to Assassin's Creed Origins, this is a game where it really tanked for the 2200G. 45 average FPS, and then we compare that to the Ryzen 3 1200, that scored 52 FPS. The i3-8100 did fare a lot better in this game, scoring 60 average FPS. The 0.1% lows were actually the best, however, on the 2200G. It's probably just variants. This is a console port, so again, that optimization is not entirely the best for PC. The 1% lows, however, were pretty similar across the board, so they're generally the numbers that you want to look at when it comes to stuttering. 0.1% lows, again, is like that worst of worst of worst outside of three standard deviations, aka an anomaly. So now we just finished up with those heavy games that really stress the CPU, but also stress the GPU as well. What about some competitive multiplayer titles? Well, CSGO is one of the first games that comes to mind, and here we saw the i3-8100 was scoring a little victory over the 2200G, which uh, then scored quite a sizable victory over the Ryzen 3 1200. So if you were into playing CSGO and you're going to buy either of these three CPUs, I wouldn't go with the Ryzen 3 1200 unless you knew how to overclock it. Uh, then you could get some more performance out of it. But out of the box, 2200G or of course the i3-8100 would be your best bet to go with. Moving over to Dota 2, however, this was a similar story yet again. Uh, the i3-8100 coming out on top and then followed by the 2200G quite closely and then the Ryzen 3 1200 actually falling again quite a bit behind. So also in these games, you will want to have 
pretty high FPS due to the competitive nature of Dota 2 and CSGO and even games like Fortnite and PUBG. Uh, but the last benchmark we're going to throw up for you guys is the Cinebench R15 score. And the results really kind of scaled, especially in these competitive games, to the Cinebench score itself. i3-8100 scoring close to 600 points, Ryzen 2200G scoring in the mid 500s, and then the Ryzen 3 1200 scoring about 480 points there. Single threaded performance was a little bit weird, 123, and then the 2200G surprisingly only scoring 126. i3-8100 scoring close to 150. So now it comes down to, in my opinion, the most important part of a product, and that is the price. And you've got the i3-8100 coming in around about 15 to 20 dollars more expensive than the Ryzen 3 1200 and Ryzen 3 2200G, which are both priced similar with just under $100 at the moment on Amazon.com. So between the two Ryzen CPUs, first of all, which should you choose? Uh, in my opinion, I would go with the 2200G. It does have that GPU portion on board, which performs similar to a GT 1030, and that's included for nothing, really. Uh, it's also clocked higher out of the box than the Ryzen 3 1200. So if you aren't into overclocking, then you would be best off going with the 2200G in my opinion. In some of those heavier titles like Far Cry 5, it only fell behind by one FPS, but when it comes to the competitive multiplayer titles, the 2200G did beat the Ryzen 3 1200 by quite a lot. So that would be my pick. However, the problem with the 2200G is, is that you have to make sure that your motherboard is 200 series compatible. If it's not, you may have some problems out of the box. Uh, the i3-8100, however, you can couple that with a cheap H310 motherboard, uh, just like you could couple the Ryzen 3 with a budget A320 motherboard, and you're good to go in terms of playing games. However, I will say one thing, if you are on the Ryzen side of things, you might want to go for a B350 motherboard, which does have a lot more upgradability than an A320, for example. You can put in an 8-core 16-thread on that motherboard in the future, and you've got a great upgrade path. As opposed to the Intel side of things, if you want to upgrade, you generally want to get a Z370 motherboard with a better VRM on board, and then you can put in a 6-core 12-threaded 8700K, although all these options are more expensive. So as it stands, the i3-8100, it does perform the best in these benchmarks. It is the better gaming CPU in my opinion, however it does cost a little bit more. Also with all three CPUs, you do get an included cooler too, so you don't have to go out and buy an additional cooler to get good value out of these three four core CPUs. And if you wanna see how they compare against an 8700K, then I recently tested the i3-8100 versus the 8700K with the same GTX 1060 and it performed pretty well. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you didn't, be sure to hit that like button and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Also let us know in the comments section below which of these four cores would you pick and why. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.